Hello everyone! Today I have the second video about making this sporting jacket to share with you. This video will show the process of adding sleeves, lining the jacket, finishing the collar, and completing this project. I was quite pleased with how this turned out, so I'm really excited to be sharing the process with all of you. I'm going to go ahead and get started, and I hope you enjoy! I felt the lapel was a little bit plain, so I decided to line it with a plaid flannel material, and this lining will extend to the back of the collar as well. And I did this by pinning part of the jacket to the fabric, then cutting around it. I pinned the plaid fabric to the interior of the lapel, making sure all the edges lined up. Once they did, I started folding the edges inward so they sit half an inch away from the edge of the lapel. I did this by eye, then went through and measured to make sure that the spacing was even. And I actually redid the pinning process several times to make sure the plaid pattern was symmetrical. I sewed the plaid material in with very small slip stitches because I didn't want any top stitching to be visible. It's also worth noting that the lining doesn't need to reach the bottom of the panels. It can stop about an inch below where the lapel turns out. Now the shoulder seam between the front and the back panels can be pinned and sewn with a half inch seam allowance. Then I sewed the lower edge of the collar onto the neckline of the back of the jacket with the right sides facing each other. And with the collar done, I could finally sew up the side seams so they were pinned in place, then sewn with a half inch seam allowance. And though I didn't film it, hopefully it's implied by this point that all of those seams were ironed before moving forward. To finish the armholes, I pinned a bias cut strip of cotton around the opening with the right sides facing each other. This was sewn on with a half inch seam allowance. And this is pretty much the lazy way of doing a facing. It will have the same effect without having to create a separate pattern. The bias cut strip gets turned inward until it's no longer visible then it's pinned in place. And the reason I'm doing it this way instead of folding the wool inward is because this puts less tension on the material, so it's less prone to puckering. I sewed the bias cut strip in place with large stitches, but I made sure the stitches looked pretty from the right side of the material. These stitches don't have to be especially durable since they won't matter once the sleeves are sewn on and the lining is attached. So you could even secure these with temporary basting stitches. Then I turned the hem inward by about a half inch and pinned it in place. Once again, I'm doing this by eye, then measuring to make sure it's even. I sewed the hem with small running stitches, less than an eighth of an inch away from the edge. When working with thick wool, any stitching will leave visible divots on the front side of the fabric, so the closer to the edge you sew, the less noticeable the stitching is. And once this is finished, we can move on to the sleeves. The sleeves were already cut out, but I did go back and make sure the center line and points where the gathering begins were marked, since these are important when setting the sleeves. Then I pinned the pieces of the sleeves together, and since this will be a French seam, they are pinned with the wrong sides facing each other. I know I mentioned it in the last video, but I'll say it again. I did not draft this pattern. It's a slightly altered version of a pattern from a book called 59 Authentic Victorian Patterns. The sleeve pieces get sewn together by machine. One of these seams is sewn with a quarter inch seam allowance since I didn't leave enough room, and the other is a normal half inch seam. Then the pins get removed and the seam is trimmed down so it's between 1 8 and 1 4 of an inch wide. Then the sleeves are turned the right way out and the seams are pinned once again, this time with the right sides facing each other. And this seam is sewn with a half inch allowance. Then it's ironed quite thoroughly until it sits flat, and I'm only ironing from the top side of the fabric since a French seam can't be ironed open. Now it's time for gathering. 
and I did this with a small needle and two strands of thread. I always use two strands when gathering since that makes the thread less likely to break, and nothing is worse than the thread breaking when you're almost done and having to start over because of it. And I gather with small running stitches that are pulled tightly as I go. Once the sleeve cap is gathered down to 10 inches, I tied the thread off and started on the next one. I finished the hem of the sleeves by pinning bias cut strips of cotton onto the right side of the fabric, then sewing them on with a half inch seam allowance. The sleeves get turned inside out. Then the strips get turned inward and the cotton is tucked over top of the wool and pinned so no raw edges are visible. And it's sewn in place with relatively small stitches. These stitches are permanent so they should be pretty sturdy and not visible from the front side of the fabric. Now the sleeves get pinned in place. I always start by lining up the center point with the shoulder seam, then I pin the ungathered portions in place first and work my way up the sleeve cap. This part is kind of messy to watch, there's a lot of fiddling around to make sure everything sits properly. The sleeves are secured with whip stitches, and I'm using two strands of thread to sew them on just for added durability. With fitted jackets, this seam has the most stress on it, so it's important that the seam is sturdy and will stay intact. After attaching the sleeves, I pinned the lining in place, and I didn't film this part of the process since it took me so long and I moved everything around so much. Since this jacket is very fitted, it's important that the lining lines up perfectly. So I turned the jacket inside out, then put it on my dress form and pinned the lining over top of it. The lining is sewn in place with whip stitches. I like to sew the lining to the front panels first, then around the sleeves, leaving the hem for last. And if you can, sew the lining to the seam allowance of the pieces instead of the top layer of fabric. I sewed the lining to the hem with a running stitch. This doesn't look super pretty and it isn't very durable, but there's very little tension on this stitching, so it works just fine. And I'm sewing the lining to the wool material that was turned inward when I hemmed the jacket, not the front layer of the fabric. This way no stitching is visible from the right side of the material. And the final step is adding buttons. These are placed two and a half inches apart and start just above the waistline. I'm using four strands of thread to sew these on, but since these are decorative buttons, I'm not looping through them very many times. And these buttons are by the brand La Mode in the style 219. Once the buttons are on, the jacket is officially finished. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I think the fit of it is really nice, and I love the lapels and sleeves, which are the parts I was most concerned about. Even though this garment is finished, this ensemble is not. I will be filming the process of making a shirtwaist and a pair of bloomers to go with this, so if that interests you, then you should subscribe. And as always, additional information about this project and the process of making it will be linked in the description box, along with anything mentioned in this video. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoyed!